So welcome again to week 19. Um, we're going to focus on form validations since we uh the um, topics for JavaScript and form validations seem to be most of the challenge I have observed that we uh, have them. So we're just going to look at this exercise to focus on form validations, maps. And if we have more time, we're going to look at client side storage that's uh, using the local storage or the session storage. All right, now we have here a template like we always do for the like we've done for the previous classes. I have a style that I have applied to this HTML element which I've created here. So the first section here, this is just the heading. First section is for maps. We're going to demonstrate the JavaScript maps here. And we have a button where the events attributes, where if we click, it's going to show the map operations. So we're going to see how this works out. And we have a div for our display for the output. And on the next section, we have for our form validation, which is most of the to be focus for today. For the form validation, we have two inputs and label. The first label here is for name. So I redesigned, I just redesigned this in a very simple way, unlike the class lesson. So you can always um, design your forms properly or depending on how you want to style your form. So here I just have the name and it's straight to the input. I yeah, I didn't need to use the label since I would not be using the label for this illustration. So I just use the name and the input which is where we're going to be focused on to get our values or data that are going to be imputed in the, using the inputs. So on the inputs, we have the type, the ID, the on blur attributes for um, the function that we're going to use to focus on the inputs. If a user enters a particular input and uh, it needs to be validated first before the, the user goes to the next input, so the on blur attribute is going to help us to that the function. We have the span for our error to display our error message, and we have an ID. Also, there's a class error, so just in case I choose to use any of them. And also, we have for the next label inputs for age. So this form just holds two um, labels and inputs. That's for age and name and age. And we have the same attributes and type for for the age as well and our spam message as well as our input uh, button that we're going to use for validating when split so um, on the next section we have for client storage so hopefully with uh, so much we have to do i hope we're able to look at client storage but so let's start already now we are going to look at maps now maps are collection type in javascript that store key value pairs now unlike objects uh, maps allow keys of any type including objects and functions and uh, it maintains order of uh, their entries as well so we we're going to go straight to creating a function for a map. So we'll see. Streets. 
So like the, we learned in the last lesson, the how do we create a map is similar to when we create four sets. So we're going to say, let's map. So map is a variable that we're using. So let's map equals to the keyword new followed by map. Now let's add items to our map. So uh, we're going to use the variable which we've created, say map dot set, which is the keyword for items like we did for sets. So we use sets for maps. Map dot set, and third part we find the um, key and the value. Now the key here. We want to add a uh, chunk create a map for a profile. We're going to demonstrate a profile here. So first we want to have name as a key. And then the value for the name will be chunk. So, So we use the variable again, map that six. And our key here will be for H. And the value, since we're not going to use the string, we write the number that we see without the quotation. Now, to print this to the screen, we're just going to look at add judges to items. Uh, we use an output and we say let output is an output variable. Say so let output equals to. So let's give an empty variable and then we'll define what we're going to have in this variable. So the output variable is what we need to display to the screen. That's the items we added, which makes up our map and profile. So um, now this is an empty variable. So we're going to use. Uh, Let's add uh, items. Let's let's define the outputs. So we say using the for for let inside of square brackets. Say since this going to be our objects. So that's why we're using the square bracket. So we say, let's key and value. Of map. sure that the output is going to print out these items in a like a list format so it's going to just give us one by one not on a straight line so we're going to format this to say outputs now it's 
going to be uh, added or equal to. So it's added and equal to. Uh, this is um, per multiple items. Why we, why we do this is we usually use this for when we're trying to print out multiple items. So we say output now is equal to and plus. So that's as much as the more outputs we have. So uh, plus equal to. So we're going to use it for one string here, like we did in the previous lesson. And first up key. This gives us a key and a value. We once uh, once this adds or gives us the first key key and value, we want to make sure that the next key and value that it's going to give would be on the next line. So we're going to add a quick tag here. Show cluster. So now let's print this out and see if all works. Say documents. Get elements by the ID. The ID is a uh, map output. to the output that we have this time. So this and let's go through it again. Now we created a function for uh, our map and inside the function since we want to print this out we, we created the function the map inside the function so we can apply it to the uh, button when clicked to display the map items. Now, inside of demonstrates the map function, we say let map equal to new map, which is a key for, for creating map. And we added the items using map.set and the key and value inside the Pair of parentheses is separated by comma. Then we added the next uh, item. So we have just two items, and then we created a variable called output, which will display the items on the screen. And we gave an empty um, uh, variable since we want to define what would be displayed. 
for the outputs we say using the for uh, let key what say say for let key and value so this is a parenthesis and we say let key and value of map which is what we have here we have the key and value of map now we say in uh, the the what we the method we are defining is that we want the once the key and the value to be displayed and if we uh, choose to also have more items it's still going to add or it's just going to be the output is just going to be equal to the so if we say we take out uh, this item and we are left with just one item so using this uh, operator here we say it's plus or equal to that's plus if it's, it's added plus and equal to the key and value it's going to stick it was whatever item which is whatever key and value we have or since we have the plus it's still going to add the, the next key um, and value we add so if we keep adding it's just going to keep adding to the output and what the expression here is for is that we, we're going to be having it with the break tag we're going to be having it displayed next on the on the next line so instead of if we do not add this, we're going to have it displayed on the straight line. But since we have used the break tag, we're going to be having it displayed uh, as a list. So one after the other. So if all goes well, can save this. Fresh and show. Okay. So I was having something to report. Let's look at what's wrong here. On line 62. Line 62 says, as access map before initial regulation. Straight on. Thank you. 
let's see if we change the name of the variable. So instead of using map, let's use So, um, because of time, we're just going to we'll come back to this again to see why it's important. So, let's look at some um, validation before we spend most of the time with this. So, this is usually one of those areas that might be too little to notice now, but we're going to come back to it. All right, so let's look at some validation. So since we have a form here, and on the form we have an ID, and we have the submit attributes. So let's just quickly validate this form. Now we will not be able to do everything as it was done in the class lesson, but we're going to make sure to validate this form using the same format. All right, so now we're going to have a function here for form validation. So we're going to put a comment here. So this is for form validation. registration since this is the registration form so let's say validate that we have our values stored in the variables that we're going to use for the validation. So first we want to say let's name our first label here is for name and second is age. So 
so say let's me the class lesson we use uh, documents.forms.get elements uh, sorry documents.forms dot uh, form name and the input uh, field name but here because it's just a very simple illustration for us to quickly look at validation so i'll be using a different mix to uh, to this so um, the class lesson recall we use the form name we use the input name and then we got the value from the input the from the input name. But here we're just going to go direct to get the elements with the ID which we have here in the input. ID we have here is name. What do we want to get? We just want to get the value as well. We're also going to do the same for the age. So say let's do it. Import. Okay. ID or As well, since we just want to get the value of the input. Now, let's validate. So we say if not name, So if it's not name entered, we want to use the error ID that we created. I will say documents. The ID which is the error message that we have here for the span. We have name error and the ID. Just once, if it's not name, then we want to give an error message and say, please enter your to return false. It's already needs the required so we shall say documents that gets elements by the ID which is same So 
this is just going to turn out in. Allow the user to go to the next bit. So we have this for, for the name. So do the same for the page. So for the age, we're also going to say if not age. This will be to validate. So we want to use regular expressions for, we want to um, try and use an expression for uh, the inputs for the name to condition what the user will be able to enter in the input field. So first we want to create a variable to um, store this condition. So we say let's name person. So the quadrant here is an expression and I'm just going to type this first then I'm going to explain how it works. Uh, I'm sorry, can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, my network went off. Yes, I can hear. Okay, the the map stuff. I think the that uh, demonstrates map. I think the error is from oh shit. Okay, can you hear me? I thought that yes, I can hear. Okay, I think the error. Okay, the map is capital. Yes, I was thinking it wasn't the new map. Oh okay. Oh, mm, so I yes. think that's where the error is, is capitalized, so it's, it's supposed to run. Yeah, sometimes I honestly don't uh, understand why it runs sometimes and then when you run it again, it doesn't 
but it might just be some bit to most of the times the um, suggestions I get when I just select and stuff might give me a different name or something different but it's some you have to um, be patient most times to look at it to see where the error might be from so I would still look at it again to know why it's not displaying properly so uh, I was trying to okay so this is where the expression for uh, this pattern for the name pattern so to validate the name this um, expression we have here just like the one in the last lesson but just that here we have a plus sign instead of the asterisk sign so what this uh, simply means is that um, it's uh, this line of code is um, just creating a rule and just like the name uh, the variable name pattern we just uh, we call it a pattern for checking names or uh, anything that is entered so here we have a, a label for names so we expect that a name should be entered now this pattern is just going to check for, for the uh, way the name is entered we're just going to make sure that the user enters the name according to the pattern that I've set. So here we use the forward slash first, and these two uh, lines just is just like uh, uh, how we start the patterns. So we always make sure that we write these patterns inside the uh, space between the two forward slash. And then the sign, next sign here we have here is just means that uh, let the uh, pattern start here. So this sign just means the pattern starts here, and the dollar sign here means that this is where it ends. This is where the pattern, uh, pattern ends. And then inside the uh, square bracket, what we have here, the uh, capital letter A, Z, and then the small letter A and Z just means that. Uh, the letters that should be entered in the input field now uh, should be uppercase, all uppercase are allowed and uh, lower cases are allowed. So that's just what this uh, expression defines here. So it starts at this at the beginning, check if there is uh, one or more letters and any big or small letters in the expressions and also checks after checking make sure that it ends so this dollar sign just the pound sign you just make sure it makes it uh, um, let the browser know that this is where our pattern ends so and also because we have not included any number it also means that we, what is allowed here are just the text, the uh, alphabets, which is A to Z, upper cases, and A to Z, lower cases. So we do not allow numbers. Since we did not include numbers, it means that numbers cannot be entered in the input field. So it must start with a letter and end with a letter. All right. So next now, we want to see let's name equal to so let's get the value from the name because we uh, have the first of all name variable here where we got the value inside this function so since because uh, this is a local scope we have to tell again what's the name uh, variable quotes since we are inside another uh, function which is another local scope so we're going to redefine the name again so i can copy this Let's name because that means that it 
identify the ID name. For example, so uh, we also so we also want to uh, create a pattern so for the age. Now, for the age, we're going to do this differently. So for the age, we say if inside the parentheses, we say if name, and we use this uh, the and or operator. So before we go to age, sorry, we want to make sure that the name validation is uh, right. So we say if name and the pattern which we've set, which is name pattern. Sorry, if name, it's, it's if it's name. And it's not the pattern. So we want to say if the um, value entered is actually uh, the this value name, but it's not the name pattern. That's the pattern that we set here. So we want to do something. So prepare for the first. We're going to say documents. Using the error, so we say document that gets a uh, ID error. message that we're going to give here will be invalid thing. Hello. I'm really sorry. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I can hear you. I can also hear you, sir. Sorry, my network is actually too big. We're not so familiar today. Okay, so I understand that we've already spent so much time, but I hope I'll be able to finish this as possible. So, I have most of the questions we have for the challenges we're having at the form validation answer. Now, um, this I try to use this same this pattern because I felt it to be faster to uh, illustrate, but I still, if you have any question on the, if you have used the class lesson the pattern and you have any challenges or any question, you can ask me before the meeting ends. But I'm just going to try and complete this as quick as I can. So I have this set to as well. All right, so we were trying to validate the name inputs field and we uh, created the variable where we Set the pattern for the strings that will be entered, that the name or the value that will be entered. We say we want it to be uh, all the only letters, it starts with a letter and end with a letter, and all uh, lower and upper case letters, alphabet as well. And then we make sure that the uh, function uh, have the variable name where we are going to store the value from the uh, form inputs using the ID name that we have for the form inputs uh, 
and next we want to say so if the uh, uh, name and the pattern they use the name and it's not pattern so if it's name and it's not pattern or we could as well say it's not pattern but we want it to be uh, very accurate so we say if it's name but it's not pattern uh, name and not pattern we want to say that the name you've entered is invalid in an invalid format so the text you've entered is an invalid format so that's why we use the document that gets element by id in the name error using the inform the span element which we created here in the form so which is name error we want to see, we're saying that uh, it should display this text so that's why i use the inner text so say document that gets element by id name error in a text equal to uh, invalid name or uh, uh, in a text or in a system sequence to the box center so uh, invalid be the error message now if the pattern is if the pattern is correct let's do any stupid pause and wait you know that i was more than you just watched the first one we start man oh sorry we start are you asking a question no, sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, so if it's um, yeah, and not pattern, then the error message we get. But if it's uh, the name, so I'm going to copy this. This, yeah. So if it's the name, then we do not need to do anything or we can also give. But since it's just an input. There's no need to give a success message unless it's submitted. So we're just going to do nothing. Now this is the validation for the name in case. We can also do the same for the age as well. So we're just going to we're just copy this. to change the uh, variables since for the age will be uh, doing something different for the age so this will be uh, for the base age now for our age validation we can say let age so we want to also make sure we get the value that's entered for the age so let's go up there okay so say let age port get the uh, documents that get by the ID which we have in the age in case and we just want to get the value for the age that is entered and then now for the validation we say if age for this time if age and is not a number so we use this To use this number so let's say it's not number so remember when we learned to use uh, this in the class lesson if you want to check if uh, some a, a data type is a number so so if h and is number sorry Agent is not a number. We're going to say what documents that gets uh, by sorry, this is
sorry, uh, age. Wrong date. So, so. We're just going to say invalid age. Thus, if the um, age inside is a number, then the one needs to say anything, so I'm just going to copy this quickly. Get this done because of time. So this will be the age error for the ID. This we're not going to be doing it. So if all goes well, we expect that we get these um, error messages. Make sure that the input field is going to read any um, other pattern as a value. So let's try getting details to. Okay, so we also need to fix this before we we'll get to this part. Just might give us more errors. So I'm just going to turn this back using the back tick. I'm going to check and see if this works on here. So the validation is important, but it's, this means that we have to get this uh, line fixed first because on the console it's going to tell us that the, the line which still has the problem is still not resolved yet. So I'll give a nice syntax error from 1 to 4. Everything is displaying as it should. Alright, so now we have the map displaying, and this just gives us the items that we need. They are added to the map in a key value. Um, they 
strength in your soul um, designed here for the output display. So we said using the bad tick. So I use the bad tick here because this is the expression that I have that works. Now um, we we have it and displaying the key and the file. So it is just and also it's also on a new line just like we also created here using the um, break tag. Sorry, can you increase your volume a little? Okay, sorry. Um, can you hear me louder now? Can you hear me? It's better now. Okay, it's probably still my mental. All right, so I was um, illustrating how I got the um, map fixed. So I used the back tick for the, um, the expression here. Because I wanted them to be displayed um, as like a list, one after the other, once we uh, click the button. So I use the black tick and the sign and query brace to make sure that the key and the value is printed in this format, just like we have it here. So we have for name and John Doe and age 30. So this is just the profile created here for John Doe. Now for the validation so far, and I, I will just go through it again because of the whole iteration from the next work. I apologize for the today. Now for the validation, we already have the form created here, and I, like I said, I wanted this to be as quick as possible. So I just created the form without the form name or input name since I I want to use the ID instead of the name, but you can still go ahead to use the class lesson pattern where we use, which is the standard, where we have form names and input names. So here I have an ID for the form and I have an ID for the input. And I do not have the label element here, I just type the name directly. So I can just quickly um, illustrate how to create validations for the input. Now, on the um, JavaScript, I created a function that validates the registration. So this is a registration form. It's just a short uh, example, very short form. So it's a registration form that takes in name and age. And on the ID, I have it that validation form. And on submit, which is the first um, function which we have here, we want it to be, once this form is submitted, we want it to return the validate registration that we have created here. So the function validate registration simply just takes the inputs that will be entered inside the, the input field and stores it inside this variable. So it is like a container where we want to store values. And now we want to use this container to uh, check if something was entered and if it's not entered, then we're going to tell you that please enter the right uh, requirements. So we expect that a name should be entered in the input field. So we use the document.getElement by ID. Since we have an ID in the input field, but the other way is if you have a name in the input, you can say document.forms the name of the form because you must have a name of the form for that. So document.forms the name of the form and the name of the input field to get the value. So it dot value to get the value and you store it in a container just like this. And then next we want to say if it's not the name that we want the error message to be displayed. So this is please enter your name. So that's why when I submit and I haven't entered any uh, inputs, it says please enter your name. And then also uh, that's it's, this is the first it returns and if a name has been entered, so I click add one and I submit, then it doesn't give an error message for the name, but instead gives an error message for the name because um, we say if uh, if if not name, so that if there's no um, value, that's when it gives us the error. But if there is a value, we see the else statement, we say it's do nothing because it's just an input, so we expect that all is well. And then also for the age, if no age, if no age is entered, it's going to give us the error message, return the form as false. And then if an age is entered, then, 
can end the time that then it's going to do nothing. So the submission will be success to them. But, and then also we also set a um, a pattern for the name imputes. So we say that if we type in numbers, for example, which is not part of the pattern that we set in here, we also want to get an error message. So I went to see if this works. Okay, so the error valid name format is not displaying. Hopefully, let's see why. Okay, and then there's an error message for this as well. All right, so we don't have much time for uh, this, but um, so far, what we've done, we've been able to say that the error message for when no inputs have been entered and the error message for when no uh, input. The age has been entered as well. It's going to give us, tell us to please enter the file that is expected. All right, so because of time and the next like, class that we'll be having, I'm going to stop here. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me on the WhatsApp group so you can book the one on one. Okay, so I'm going to end. And I... Okay. So this is the last. Um, life class for this course. From here on, you'll be focused on your project. So, and every outstanding um, assignment that I'm 